Hello you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. This is The Rat speaking and today we're going to talk a little bit about DOM cross-site scripting. A subscriber asked me how do you find DOM cross-site scripting. Now manually it's really hard to find DOM cross-site scripting. That's because uh, the name says it all. you probably already seen my video about uh, DOM accesses. If you haven't I'm going to put a link in the description below. It's really useful that you watch it first because it explains a lot. Uh, DOM cross-site scripting happens on the document object model, so it doesn't happen in the HTML of the document, but it happens via the document object model. So it's it's like a secondary layer of cross-site scripting. Um, I explained it all in my video, and as you can see, I already navigated it a little bit. I'm going to open up my uh, Firefox here. And as you can see, I've tried the website a little bit and I've already found my vulnerability. What I'm going to do though is go home and I'm going to show you guys how you can find it. So I've been uh, browsing my Firefox with my burp proxy in the background capturing all of my requests. Um, and then I just, when I feel like I've found all of the functionalities on the website, so when I've mapped all of my attack surface, I can go back to burp and then when I look in the target map and the target tab in the site map, my site map should be filled. If it's not, that is because burp has two uh, tasks by default enabled. It's going to have the live passive crawl from proxy. This means that all of the traffic that you're going through is going and is coming through the proxy, of course, is going through to the site map. Uh, and it's going to have a live audit check enabled as well, which is going to do some minor checks. It's not going to do the more offensive checks because those are going to uh, trigger some hacker defense systems if they are in place, but it's going to do some less obtrusive scans such as static code analysis and that kind of stuff. Now, um, we can also do other tasks. We can, as you see up here, you can start a new scan or a new live task. Now, we want to start a new scan. I know this is the specific uh, parameter that's vulnerable, so what I'm going to do is uh, go back to my target map, uh, to my target tab, go to my site map, and then right click the return path, and then I'm going to uh, click scan and open a new scan launcher. Now, I just want to audit my selected item because I already know that this is the vulnerable item. Uh, you can also set the burp to crawl and audit, and it's going to crawl all of the other sub uh, subdomain. No, sorry, not subdomains. All of the other functionality on the website is going to be crawled by burp wherever possible. You can also edit your scan configuration and add a few rules. For example, you want to only do extensions. You want the light active check. You can all add that kind of stuff in here. For now, we're just going to leave it blank. And if you want a different resource pool than the default one, so the default one will do 10 requests uh, concurrently maximum. If you want to change that, you can also set that in here. Now I've already ran this scan, so we're going to go back to our dashboard and we're going to check out the results real quick. So as you can see in here, it already ran before. Now when I open the results, you're going to go to the overview page and this is going to give you a little bit of information about your scan. And then you're going to see a tab called audit items, which is going to indicate where in the scan you are at which point. And you're also going to see a tab issue activity. Now this is the most important one. You're going to see in this specific case, you're going to see an entry in here, link manipulation DOM based. And it's going to give you a little bit of information about what's happening. Now this is a typical example, of course, of something that's interesting for us because it, uh, it tells us that there is some DOM manipulation happening. That's going to indicate to us that DOM cross-site scripting is a possibility. Not that it's possible, but that it might be possible. All right, so the next step we have is the request and the response. This is just the normal request and response like we're used to. Uh, and then uh, Burp is going to do a dynamic analysis of that website as well. So what it's going to do is run the website, give it a few parameters and see what comes out. Now, in this case specifically, it gave a weird random parameter to return string and it saw that it came back into the page, that random string. So that's our DOM sync. Uh, if you guys watched my previous video, you probably already know what DOM syncs are. If you don't, 
go watch it down in the description below. It's really interesting. I promise <laughs> it's my content. Of course, it's interesting. All right, uh, let's get serious again. So the, the also generate a POC for you, which is also really interesting. Now, when you get that POC, what you can do is you can uh, just copy and paste it into your browser. So I'm just going to do that for you guys. Now you, you're going to see that this is not going to, what, what is supposed to happen is that this return path, it gets reflected into the back button because back is go to the previous path or take the return path. But when I click this, I don't get a cross-site scripting pop-up. That's because there's still a slash behind here. When I go and inspect the element, you'll see that my JavaScript is not complete. So as you can see here, there is some error in my JavaScript. Now, when I remove this slash and I press the button, there we go. We have our DOM cross-site scripting. So that's how you can look for DOM cross-site scripting events. If you want to look for them yourself, you'll have to, for example, put a random string in to each parameter. So this is the way you do this manually. And then you go and inspect the element and you find your random string if I can type that is, and you can see that it's reflected in the, in the page. Now, this might also seem like reflected cross-site scripting, uh, but since we're talking about a return path here, it's manipulating the doc document object model, and the back button is not directly getting the value from the return path. The back button is getting the document, uh, the value from the history. So uh, in JavaScript, you also have a history which is when you right click on here, this is your history. So um, the back button is getting the first item from the, your history and we're inserting the random string into our history. I hope this makes it a little bit clear why it's so hard to manually look for dumb cross-site scripting. Everything looks like reflected cross-site scripting in this case, but it's not the case for this page. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions for a video, please leave them in the comments below because I really do like making this channel more community driven. I've also included a Slack channel in the comments below. If you want, you can join that. Uh, I'll be in there and a few other guys. If you need some help, we're really willing to help you. Uh, if you did enjoy, please leave a like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe because when we reach 1,500 subscribers, we'll be doing a giveaway. Thank you very much and I hope I'll see you in the next video.